What's good, family? It's me, Game Boy, back with a new video. Today, I'm coming at you with a book review for Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James. Keep in mind, if you like what you hear, you can always go to the go to the description of this video and find a link to purchase the book. All my social media links are also in the description, so keep that in mind as well. And with that being said, let's get started. Stolen Legacy is basically a book. Um, explaining the Egyptian origins of Western philosophy. George G.M. James pretty much he explains the backstory on how the Greeks ended up getting you know accredited for Egyptian teachings you know what I'm saying and this is a big deal because a lot of people feel like Africans and Africa is like a backwards country you know what I'm saying like Africans live backwards and all that stuff and we haven't contributed nothing to society but the findings in this book you know what I'm saying like if more people if more people knew about what George GM James was talking about in this book then you will understand like how much Africans have contributed to society and how big of a role Africa has played in history. Basically, I'm going to break it down for you. He basically says, like, the Greek philosophers who we accredited, who we accredit for, you know, philosophy and all that stuff, he basically says what happened is that Pythagoras, Aristotle, Autumn, they went over to Egypt and they received they teachings from you know the Egyptian mystery schools Egypt is like Egypt back then is like how America is today how like you know what I'm saying foreign students come over here to like go to our schools and stuff like that Egypt was like a powerhouse back then in like the central you know central country for like education science all that stuff so people was going to Egypt so that they could so that they could learn basically so what happened was like, um, you know, Pythagoras, Aristotle, Autumn, they went over to Egypt. They got, you know, initiated into the mystery schools. The Egyptian religious school was known as the mysteries. So they got initiated into the Egyptian mystery schools. And the thing about the Egyptian mystery schools is everything was taught orally. Like, they forbid writing down anything you know what i'm saying they forbid writing it down they teaching so in uh for the most part pythagoras and aristotle and all them they respected this like they didn't write down the teachings what happened is after they learned what they learned and then they went back to greece and then they started teaching they people what they learned over in egypt the knowledge that they were spitting was so sacred that they you know they teach they they followers basically spread it the rumor that you know what i'm saying uh aristotle pythagoras they basically they followers is the ones who started this you know false information that they um invented the philosophy that they learned when well, really the actuality is they went over to egypt and you know learn what the egyptians was teaching and then they brought that back to greece you know and you know this you know this book is true just because like because for the most part if you look at the um if you look at the history you'll see that the 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 knowledge that they was teaching the greek philosophy that they was teaching wasn't even accepted by like the greek government the greek pythagoras aristotle all the greek philosophers were either executed exiled you know what i'm saying condemned in some way by the greek government by their own government they greek philosophy wasn't even accepted in in greece so from that point alone we know that like greek philosophy didn't have its origins in greece it didn't have its origins in greek cultures not only that but um if you look at the history some more and, and in this book it break it all down for you they say that the you you'll notice that after aristotle died like greek philosophy died because the greeks didn't have the innate ability to continue this science you know what i'm saying they 
you know what I'm saying, they basically stole the science or they got accredited for the science and they didn't have the innate ability to continue it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it was really their philosophy, then they would have had the ability to further the teachings, but they didn't. After Aristotle died, all that stuff was dead, you know? So that's pretty much the um, premise of the book, like the, the Egyptian origins of Greek philosophy. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Excuse me. Overall, um, I'm going I'm to share a couple of the cons of this book. One of the, overall, it was a good book. Like, I enjoyed the book for the most part. You know, it was, it was really good to me. You know, I really enjoyed the book. The only cons I can really think of is the book is about 150 pages. I pretty much understood, like, everything I needed to know at 50 pages. You know what I'm saying? So I think the author could have condensed the information down to at least 100 pages just to make it more of a short read. You know what I'm saying? Just to make it more, you know, just to make it more of a quick read. But... You know, 150 pages isn't really all that bad. I just think it was a lot of fluff in it, and it could have been condensed down more. You know, it was a lot of repetition also, but repetition is the father of learning. You know what I'm saying? So it's not all that bad. Um, the pros, like I said, like the author does a really good job at making it easy to understand. Every claim that he makes in this book, he make he makes it like, he'll say like, claim number one and then he'll make his claim and then he'll back it up you know what i'm saying and then he'll list his references right there at the end of you know him backing up his claim so you know he does a really good job at like you know just making the information easy to digest um also also it has some like in this book it has some egyptian teachings you know what i'm saying like specific specific egyptian teachings so it's good to pick up if you like want if you like interested in you know that egyptian philosophy and stuff like that because he, he does like reference some um like specific examples of egyptian teachings and if you know anything about like you know egyptian teachings this is like lost hidden knowledge you know what i'm saying it's been covered up it's been hidden so it's a lot of sacred ancient wisdom in this book you know it's not just him condemning the Greeks. Like you actually gonna take some stuff that you can apply from your life by read apply to your life by reading this book. So, like I said, um, I like I enjoyed the book overall. Right now, I just want to take a second to read um, an excerpt from the book. You know, just a couple short sections that stood out to me. This is from the first page. Introduction. Characteristics of Greek philosophy. The term Greek philosophy to begin with is a misnomer, which is a wrong or inaccurate name. A misnomer is a wrong or inaccurate name, for there is no such philosophy in existence. The ancient Egyptians had developed a very complex religious system called the Mysteries, which was also the first system of salvation. As such, it regarded the human body as a prison house of the soul, which could be liberated from its bodily impediments through the disciplines of arts and sciences, and advanced from the level of a mortal to that of a god. This was the notion of, or of the summon bonum or greatest good to which all men must aspire, and it must, and it also became the basis of all ethical concepts. So basically, like I said in my um, video, why all black people should practice African spirituality, go check it out if you haven't seen that. The link is going to be in the description. They say that scholars and historians have confirmed that the Egyptians, the Egyptians discovered the first you know religious system they made the first religious system and um basically the basis of this religious system was one the deification of man we all gods in the flesh and um the greatest good or the overall meaning of life is to become like god so they held all ethical concepts to that standard is what i'm doing god like I say black people need to get back to African spirituality or Egyptian spirituality because if we all holding ourselves accountable and thinking is what I'm doing God like all the problems in our race is going to diminish period 
Um, and that's what the Egyptians, like that was the basis of all the ethical concepts. Is what I'm doing God like? Is what I'm doing righteous? You know what I'm saying? Black people need to get back to that mentality, period. The Egyptian mystery system was also a secret order, and membership was gained by initiation and pledged to secrecy. The teaching was graded and delivered orally to the neophyte, which is a person who is new to a doctrine. And under these circumstances of secrecy, the Egyptians developed secret systems of writing and teaching and forbade their initiates from writing what they had learned. So again, like I said, like um, Aristotle, Pythagoras, they ever, all the Greek philosophers, they respected this they didn't write down anything that they learned you know but when they like went back to greece and started teaching what they learned they the the knowledge that they were spitting was so sacred that they followers just accredit accredited them for discovering you know what i'm saying philosophy they didn't really discover it um and now i'm gonna skip a couple pages and i'm gonna I'm going to talk about, I'm going to read an excerpt from the aims of this book, because this is, this is powerful right here. He says, the aim of this book is to establish better race relations in the world by revealing a fundamental truth concerning the contribution of the African continent to civilization. It must be borne in mind that the first lesson in the humanities is to make a people aware of their contribution to civilization and the second lesson is to teach them about other civilizations by this dissemination of the truth about the civilization of individual peoples a better understanding among them and a proper appraisal of each should follow this notion is based upon the notion of the great mastermind ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Consequently, this book is an attempt to show that the authors of Greek philosophy were not the Greeks, but the people of North Africa commonly called the Egyptians. And the praise and honor falsely given to the Greeks for centuries belong to the people of North Africa and therefore to the African continent. Consequently, this theft of the African legacy by the Greeks led to the erroneous world opinion that the African continent has made no con contribution to civilization, which I said, and that its people are naturally backwards. This is a misrepresentation that has become the basis of race prejudice, which has affected all people of color. You know what I'm saying? So basically like this information is important to know and understand because once people start understanding that Africans, Africa is the home of civilization and our people, you know what I'm saying? We the original people, we discovered all arts, sciences, you know what I'm saying? Trades, everything originated in Africa. We don't get the respect we deserve, we, we deserve and that racial prejudice, all that racism is gonna die out because it's gonna have to die out because you're gonna have to accept the fact that black people invented everything. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to get with the program, period. So overall, I give this book um, a five out of five. Keep it real with you. I really enjoyed it and I recommend that you go pick it up again. The link to this book, if you want to purchase it for yourself, can be found in the description. Also, all my social media links can be found in the description. And with that being said, uh, check out my Black Power Lecture. Sign up for free access below. If you're interested in getting access to my Black Power Lecture or you just uh, or you want to join my book club, it's an online and in-person book club. So, again, go to the description and find what you need. And with that being said, I love you all. Have a good one. Peace.